I mean dealing with the stress, I mean dealing with the pain Getting tired, you're trying to find a way Cause I just wanna be alive Cause I don't think that I just wanna go and die today When I used to think to myself, yeah but am I What's up, what's down, what is all around, what is good YouTube, it's your boy Groovy Grizzly back with another video and today we are talking about Ark Survival Evolve and more specifically we're actually talking about Ark Survival Evolve single player settings. That's right, if you're just like me and you enjoy and you love playing Ark but you hate 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 spending hours and hours and hours grinding at a game for no reason well this is the slider for you there are plenty of other sliders out there there's plenty of other videos out there that kind of cover the same basis that i'm covering for you today but the difference is, is that some people either are too far to the right or too far to the left with their setting. What I mean by that is you either have settings that will make the game much longer than it needs to and much more difficult to obtain certain things in the game. And then you have some settings that are way too fast that will literally instantly give you things right away without any hassle. So I made something right between the middle, something that it won't take you a thousand hours to finish the island, but it also won't take you only 50 hours to finish the island. These settings are also perfect for playing by yourself, but they're not just limited to that. You can also get the most out of these settings with playing with a friend or playing with two friends. Now, before we get started, we're not going to start this video at the top. What we're going to do is we're actually going to start right here at the very bottom. And the reason for that is because I want you to go ahead and check off two boxes that need to be turned on for this slider to work. And the first slider box that you want to check off is going to be use single player settings. Somewhere here on this video, I'm going to post exactly what the single player settings does. So the single player settings will adjust some of the sliders in this game to make the progression of the game a little bit faster. However, some of the settings that get changed is still to me really slow because let's face it if you're playing the game by yourself you're playing on your single player world the game stops once you log off it doesn't keep going like it would on a server so you want to be able to make up for that lost time by speeding things up a little bit so we're going to have the single player settings check mark also i just want to make it completely aware to anyone that there are some bugs with the single player settings being marked. Let's face it, at the end of the day, when this game was made, this game was made to be played on a server with a bunch of people. Me personally, since I am playing on my own, if a bug happens to happen in the game, an item that's supposed to be there doesn't show up. And the way to combat that's very simple. You're playing on your own, you have console commands. You can simply just console command to spawn in the artifact. Now, I understand that for some people, they might not want to do that. They just don't want to deal with the hassle of console commands. And that's fine. Hey, listen, if you want me to make a video on slider settings that do not use the single player settings, then hey, just let me know in the comment section below. If I have enough people asking for it, then I will 1000% make sure that I make a video on the slider settings. It's gonna take me a second because I have to make some modifications. I have to figure out what they look like and what they feel like. But once I do that, I will make sure to make a video for you. The next check mark you wanna check off is gonna be the maximum difficulty setting. The reason for that is because you will not ever get max level dinos unless you have it checked off. Now I understand that on this check mark, it says that forces the max dinosaur level to be level 150 regardless of map. I don't know if they changed it or not, but from my own experience previously, any story mode map right here will not have level 150 dinos, even if you have that check marked off. The max level I believe you can get on those maps is gonna be level 120. Unless you are on PC and you make some modification inside of in-game files. And if you are on PC and you would like me to show you how to do that, hey, again, let me know in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to make a video explaining on how to go into your game files and change the game settings to where level 150 dinos will spawn on your story mode and art. But I wanna be upfront with you. You can just do a simple YouTube search and there are plenty of content creators that will explain that to you the exact same way that I would explain it to you as well. All right, now that we got the check marks out of the way, let's Let's scroll up to the top. The very first slider on the top is going to be the difficulty settings. 
listen this difficulty setting will not matter unless you check off that difficulty box that max level difficulty box this slider does not make the game harder all it does is it allows max level dinos to spawn in your world that's all it does technically that would make it harder because i mean you would die a lot faster being attacked by a level 150 giga than a level 20 giga i mean you probably get one shot regardless but hey but on this i believe on default it's 0.2 have this all the way up to one because if you don't have it all the way up to one max level dinos will not be maxed out so you have to have this up to full one the slider all the way up to one and you also have to have that box checked off at the bottom for this to work properly if you don't then it won't work xp multiplier now this one's kind of important i keep that one the same the reason for that is because again the single player settings will automatically change the xp multiplier for you so if you change this slider for the xp multiplier you're adding on on top of what Ever the XP multiplier is from the single player settings. I believe it's like two or two point, let's say it's two. So if the XP multiplier from single player settings is being checked off, automatically takes it from one to two. If you move this slider up to two itself, what it's gonna actually do is gonna give you four because it's gonna multiply that two by another two to give you four. Does that make sense? I hope it does, a simple math. All right, let's go, move on. <laughs> Next thing I have changed is gonna be taming speed. Like I said, whenever you stop playing ARC on a single player setting, the game stops. It doesn't keep going. When you play on a server, the map, the time, everything just keeps moving on without you but when you're playing on single player setting you are the center of that universe and once you're out of that universe the universe stops so to combat that i just have taming speed up to five now this is very much up to you i'm going to recommend anywhere between three to five to be the taming speed because again the single player setting does alter this automatically for you but it's still not fast enough but if you don't want to sit there and wait literally 16 hours to get a giga i'd recommend boosting it up anywhere between three to five so that way you can get the most optimal solution for your single player setting but again it's completely up to you i would keep it anywhere between three to five for me i personally keep it at five just because it makes things a little bit faster for me next it's going to be structured damage repair cooldown i personally have that all the way down to the least number possible the reason for that is because i'm not playing on a pvp server i'm playing on a single player server so there's no point for me to have a structure damage cooldown on my structures because it's not really giving me any form of advantage so i don't see the point of me having to wait five to ten minutes to be able to repair my structure once it gets attacked from a dino i as soon as that dino is done and dealt with I want to be able to go ahead and repair it and that's what the structure damage repair cooldown allows you to do Tino turret damage I know. Dino turret damage stays the exact same. It doesn't change. Dino harvest damage, I believe by default, it's already at 3.2. If it's not, put it at 3.2. Harvest amount, I have that up to three. That's for your own player, the harvest amount from your own player. When you're banging at rocks, when you're banging at trees, it allows you to just harvest more things out of it. For me, with my arc single player playthrough, I like it to be a little bit faster, but I don't want it too fast. I feel like three is just the right number for me to be at. Now, dino character health recovery, I put that at two. The reason for that is because once you have an intense battle with a dino right let's say you're out with your wyvern you're kicking ass you're taking names but that wyvern took a ton of damage from like bats right well once you're done kicking their butts you're probably going to need to heal up your dino for me i don't like to waste time just sitting there hanging out doing absolutely nothing but just force feeding my dino until his health goes up so i just boosted it up to two so that way it just goes twice as fast i will suggest that you do not make it higher than five because then it's just way too quickly i'll say keep it anywhere between two and four and I think that's going to be the optimal results for you to be able to get out of your dino character health recovery. Setting This setting right here, this is only for PC, Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, mobile, whatever other systems there are out there that has ARC in it. This does not apply. I don't think any of them have that non-dedicated host setter. This is only for PC. This right here, if you are playing with friends, you want to have that number as high as possible. Literally just press the nine button and just hold on to it for like three seconds until you don't see any more numbers and then let it go. And it just makes it the highest number it can possibly go to. What that does is basically if you're in one side of the map and your friend is on the other side of the map, it's not gonna warp them back close to you. On Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, 
you can't go too far away from your friends. You have to stay kind of close to them if you're playing on a single player server. But on PC, you can mess with the tether distance and that's gonna allow you to play as far away from each other as possible without any issues. However, if you go inside of a cave in Ark and you are not playing on a server or paying for a server, once you go inside that cave, it's going to automatically teleport your friends to that cave with you, no matter what. So whoever the host is, if you're inside of a cave or outside of the cave, the players that are playing with you are limited to being within that area. The game treats caves as a whole different cell in the game. So that's why it automatically teleports you inside of the cave once the host of the game goes inside of the cave. Now, the rest of these check marks are literally all up to you. I will explain to why I don't have some of these turned on and why I have some of these turned on. But hey, listen, this is completely up to you. You do whatever you want with it. First one's allowed third person camera. I just don't see the point of not having that on, especially me making videos on arc. I need to be able to go on third person so that way I can take screenshots and make those badass thumbnails, right? So I need to have the allow. Uh, I need to allow third person camera to be turned on. Uh, enable global voice chat. All of this stuff is irrelevant to me because remember, this is a single player setting. So I don't even mess with that stuff. Notify player left. I don't care about that. The reason why I have notify player joined is because again, sometimes I play this with a friend and whenever I'm playing with my friend, I like to know whenever they join. So that way I know to go ahead and get started on whatever it is that we were doing. Admin login. I don't worry about that. You don't have to worry about that. It's irrelevant. Enable crosshairs. So I keep that turned off. The reason for that is just for my own immersion. Also, in the game, there are attachments for weapons that you can use. And there is a crossbow and a bow and arrow later on in the game that has a scope already attached to it. So if I have the enable crosshairs turned on, it makes a lot of the attachment for those weapons completely irrelevant in this game. And I don't want that. I want to I want to have a reason to use those attachments. Next is forced no HUD. I, I don't really care for that. Um, I like to be able to see what I need to press. I'm not the kind of person that can remember what buttons are what, so I need to be able to see what buttons does what. Disable loot crate, that's completely up to you. If you disable loot crates, basically all the drops that come down in the map in the game is not gonna be there anymore. Hardcore mode, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's, I don't know how many games that does hardcore mode. You got Minecraft, you got arc now you got seven days to die you have all these games or all these survival games that have hardcore mode you know what it does if you die you have to start the game all over again pve mode i don't have that checked mark off it doesn't really matter to me basically what pve means is player versus environment it disables pvp mode so if you're playing with a friend it keeps them from being able to kill you but if i'm playing with any friends they're usually part of my tribe so i have disable friendly fire turned on so that way if we're fighting a dino, I don't accidentally shoot my friend in the back of the head. Although that makes for some really funny content. And most likely, if I start playing with a friend or I start making videos of me playing with a friend, that check mark is definitely going to be turned off. Uh, show map player location. This is the same thing that goes with the enable crosshairs. You have GPS trackers in the game and you have a compass in the game. I feel like if I have show map player location check marked on, that means that I won't have a reason to use those items in the game. And I want to have a reason to use everything in the game. Uh, no tributes download. I keep that turned off. If you have this check marked off, what it does is it automatically turns all of these off as well. So you just kind of click that on. It automatically turns everything off. It doesn't allow you to transfer your character, your dinos, or any items to another map. So let's say I finish with the island and then I want to move on to aberrations. If I have this check mark off, I'm going to have to go to aberration without my character. I have to start from scratch again. No item downloads, no dino downloads, and no survivor downloads is the exact same thing. It just keeps you from being able to download those things into the next map. Enable PvP Gamma. This is completely up to you. Again, I personally don't have that check marked on just because I want the night to be night and I want the day to be day and I want dark to be dark and I want light to be light. Use corpse locator. That's just I have that turned on. I think pretty much everyone would have that turned on. That's because I don't want to take five hours to find out where I died at. Hopefully I'll never die, but there's most likely a chance that I am going to die and you want to have that turned on. Disable structure placement collision. Listen, I recommend everyone have this checked on. The reason for that is because if you want to make unique builds, and you want to put certain things in certain spots to where it looks nice, you have to have that turned on or else the game won't allow you to put certain structures in places that you want. Allow multiple platform floors. If you have a Bronto, if you have a Quetzal, it allows you to make multiple 
floors on their back with their saddle. Allow unlimited respects. I have that checked marked on. In the game, there's a mind wipe tonic. And if you don't have that turned on, it allows you to only use that mind wipe tonic one time. I have that check marked on. If I wanna change my character, if I wanna get some of my Ingram points back when I go to another map, because I'm gonna have some Ingram points spent into something that I don't need, I wanna be able to just respect my character as I need to. Um, disable Dino Taming, if you have this turned on, I don't know why you're playing Ark for the most part, because that's like the best part of Ark. Disable Dino Writing, same thing. What's what's the point of playing Ark? That's like the best part of Ark. Show Creative Mode, you can have that turned on if you want to, I just choose not to. If something happens that's out of my control the game is buggy it's arc it is what it is any open world game typically is kind of buggy a little bit i don't need creative mode turned on i just put in console commands so this one is relatively new allow flyer speed leveling i keep that turned off just like the other two things that i talked about before i want to have a reason to use certain dinos if i have that turned on what i'm going to do is i'm just going to have an argentavis argentavi whatever you want to call it for every single one of my flying mounts, which will make the Pterodon completely useless. It will make the Quetzal pretty useless. It'll make a lot of dinos kind of useless. If I have a loud flyer speed leveling on, I like the fact that if I want to have a scout flyer, I have to go get a Pterodon. If I want something that can carry a ton of weight, I got to go get a Quetzal. If I want something in the middle and that can fight, I'm going to go get an Argentavis. So I like that aspect of the game. So I don't mess with that. So that's the general arc rules right here. What we're going to move on to now is going to be the advanced rules. Pretty much all of these check marks right here at the top are kind of irrelevant to you, but I'm going to go over them anyways, because I do have some of them checked. Allow cave building PVE. I have that chart marked on just because I have certain ideas for certain things I want to build inside of cave. Nothing that's going to cheese the game. Just little neat little builds or whatever that I kind of want to build inside of a cave eventually. So I just have that turned on. Allow flyer carry PVE. This is very important. Playing with PVE settings. You have to have this checked on because if you don't have this checked on, it's not going to allow you to pick up wild dinos while you're flying around prevent diseases so in this game there are a couple different types of diseases specifically rabies is what i'm going to talk about on this one it just keeps you from being able to get rabies from bats i don't like to take that off just because i think it's a feature of the game it's part of the game if i disable that it's like i'm taking away part of the game right taking away part of the survival aspect of the game so i like to keep that turned on Non-permanent diseases. Now this one, I like to keep it turned off. What this does is very simple. So you have leeches in this game that will give you a permanent disease. What that means is, although you might die from that disease, once your character respawns back in, you still have that disease and you will have that disease until you get a cure for it. For me, that's just annoying and monotonous and just ridiculous. So I just keep that turned off. That way, if I die from a disease, I don't have to worry about having that disease still when I wake up. Force allow K fly personally this is a little bit cheeky part of the game i have that turned on just because there's certain caves in the game that i just kind of want to be able to fly my bird in there and fight in there with my bird it is a little bit cheeky you can turn it on or off if you want to but for me personally i like to keep it turned on so i can use all my dinos inside caves increase pvp respawn interval i'm gonna have that check marked off i don't know why it's on Basically what that does is if you continuously die, it increases the time that it takes for you to respawn on a PVP server or PVP settings. Disable imprint dino buff. I wouldn't have that check marked on if you, if I were you. Basically, whenever you're raising a baby, you get the ability to cuddle it. When you cuddle it, depending on the percentage that you cuddle it to, it gives that dino a buff. Allow anyone baby imprint cuddle. So this is the same thing. If I'm playing with someone, right? Let's say I'm playing on my server and my buddy is planning on helping me defeat a boss. Well, I'll have him log on real quick, imprint on a baby, and then I'll raise the baby for him. So that way he doesn't have to sit there and do it the entire time. And that way, when we go fight that boss, he has a animal that he can get on top of and go fight it. That's literally all that's for. So I have that check marked on. Lay egg interval. I have that set to point two. If there are two dinos that are close to each other, that's a male and a female, they kind of start to generate eggs on their own. I have it set to point two just because I need eggs when I need them. Because again, when I stop playing the game, the game stops, it doesn't keep going. So the eggs don't just pile up. So I like to have that at point two, because if I'm grinding for eggs, I'm sitting there grinding for eggs. Maining interval, I have that set to point zero zero one. Again, when you are playing this game and you get off of the game, the game doesn't keep going. It stops. And there is literally no point for me to sit there and wait for the animals, for the dinos to be ready to make. So instead, I have it set to 0 .001 to where 
it's not instant, but it makes it pretty quickly for them to be able to be ready to mate. Egg hatch speed, I have that set to 10. Once I have animals being done mated and I'm actually grinding to get eggs so I can fight the boss, I don't want to sit there and wait an hour to two hours for a wyvern egg to hatch or whatever, right? There's no positive and there's no negative to, to do that other than just consuming your time. That's literally all it is. So I have it set to 10 so that way they can go ahead and, and hatch at a decent speed. Baby mature speed. So this is very important. I have that set to 2.0. So the single player setting automatically alters all of this, by the way. However, I still feel like it takes too long of a period of time. So I like it to make it twice as fast. So I'm going to use Therizinos as an example. The reason I'm using Therizinos as an example is because it's typically what I use to fight the bosses with. So usually it takes a very long time on default settings for you to mature a Therizino. When I'm raising these Therizinos, I only like to raise them five max at a time. So with the 2.0 setting, it allows me to fully mature a, ther a baby Therizino to an adult within 30 minutes to an hour, instead of waiting for it to take two to five to 10 hours for me to fully mature a Therizino. Because when I'm raising these Therizinos, again, the game doesn't continue when I log off, it stops. With the settings that I have, I can raise up five Therizinos at a time and I can just sit there and raise them as I go along. Baby food consumption speed, I have that set to 0.25 this just gives me peace of mind so i don't have to sit there and really be constantly worried about if they have food in their inventory or not resource respawn period i don't have time to wait a thousand years for something to respawn so i have it set to 0.2 it's not instant it still takes a while but it also doesn't have me sitting there waiting for a piece of iron vein to just finally pop back up baby cuddle interval multiplier so the baby cuddle interval multiplier and the baby mature speed go hand in hand these have to be these numbers for it to work properly so you have some settings that will basically allow you to fully cuddle and get 100 percent imprint on your dino with one imprint i don't like that i still want to have to have the difficulty of having certain resources available so i can tame these dinos i just don't like the long period of time that it takes well, with these settings, it allows you with a Therizino, for example, to fully mature a Therizino with anywhere between five to 10 cuddles. So you can still get fully 100% imprinting. So it will take you anywhere between 30 to minutes to an hour to fully imprint a baby Therizino, but it'll still take you five to 10 imprints to fully imprint a dino, not a Therizino, sorry, but a dino, five to 10. For a dino baby cuddle grace period multiplier i haven't really noticed a difference in that i have it set to 10 because i saw a video a long time ago that had it set to 10 so i just set mine to 10 i can't remember the video i'm really really sorry i didn't i don't really see a difference between it being 10 and 1 if you know it please just write a comment on the bottom section below if i can find an answer from a comment i will definitely pin it but i have no clue what difference it's making because i haven't noticed a difference in the baby cuddle grace period multiplier but i have it set to 10 i just say go ahead and put it at 10 as well but i haven't really noticed a difference in anything baby cuddle lose imprint quality speed multiplier so i have that set to one that's just the default it's just basically how fast your baby starts to lose imprint if you just let it sit there and don't imprint on it once it start asking for cuddles baby imprint stat skill multiplier so by default if you fully imprint a dino to 100%, it's going to give you a boost of 30% of their stats. If you move this to two, it's going to be 60% of their stats. If you move it up to three, it's going to move up to 90. If you move it up to five, it's going to be 150% of their stat skill. I keep it at one because 30 is what the base game is based on. And that's just kind of what I leave it at. I think anything above 30, you're just basically making a God dinosaur at that point. And that just kind of takes the fun out of the game a little bit. Day cycle speed, I have that to one. Daytime speed, I have that set to one. That's all default. Now, nighttime speed, I have that set to two. The reason for that is when I'm making these videos, I generally don't go out at night. I don't do anything at night because there's nothing there's nothing you can see at night that's really worth it, right? So generally, even when I'm not recording videos, I still don't really do much of anything at night. I might just sit inside of the house and like make a couple things and that's it. So I set it to two so that way it's twice as fast and it, I don't have to sit there and wait forever for the sun to come up and go out and start doing stuff. Spoiling time. I think default is zero. I still leave it at zero. Item decomposition time, I leave that at zero. Corpse decomposition time, I keep that at zero. No resource radius 
from players. So I keep that at one. So basically what this means is this. So you, let's say you go out into the woods and you go chop down a tree. With one, it won't allow the tree to grow right next to you again if you just sat there and stood there for like an entire day. It forces you to kind of leave the area. And then once you leave the area, then the tree will grow back. No resource radius structure. It just allows certain structures to grow close to your home, but not too close to your home. I did move this to 0.3. I think the default is one just because I still want certain resources to grow kind of close to me because whenever you start chopping down trees and breaking down stone all around your house, right? It starts to make everything look empty and to keep that from happening i have it set to point three so things will still grow back around it crop growth speed and crop decay speed again once you get off the game the game doesn't keep going it stops this just allows my crop to grow at a decent enough pace while i'm playing the game so i don't have to sit there and wait forever for these things to grow all of this stuff wild dino stat per level tame dino stat per level tame dino add per level tamed dino stat affinity player stat per level experience multiplier all that stuff is set to default if you are trying to make the game easier you would just go and move these numbers around. So let's say I want the, the game to be a, a little bit easier, twice as easy, we will say. I'll move all these sliders up by one. So I'll move this to two, I'll move this to two, I'll move this to two, I'll move this to two. With the exception of this, I'll move this to four instead of two, uh, instead of two, of course. So you just double all these numbers. If you wanted to make it harder, you cut all those numbers in half. So I'll move this to 0.1, I'll move this to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. This is actually what matters when you're trying to actually set the difficulty of the game. Everything else, like the those checkboxes, it doesn't really make the game more difficult. This does. So let's say I just leveled up my character and I want to bump it up on health. If I have this set to 0.5, instead of giving me 10 extra points on health, it's going to give me 5 points in health. Experience multiplier. So the single player settings, I actually really like what they did with the experience multiplier. You already get a good bit of experience from the single player setting box. So I just leave it at 1. There's no need to change this at all. But let's say you want to get more experience from killing things than you do from crafting things. You're just just boost this up to like whatever number you want or if you want it to be more difficult to get XP whenever you're just harvesting things you would decrease that number but I just keep it at default that's just my own personal liking flyer platform on a unaligned basing if I want to transport a dino from one side of the map to another I can literally put him on the back of my Quetzal and just ride and it won't slide off you still have to secure them because remember this is arc game is buggy you still might need to build something around it so they don't completely slide off but it won't purposely slide off in the game passive defenses hurt rideless dinos so there are spiked walls in this game i use them sometimes when i'm taming dinos inside of the snow biome and if you put these walls down let's say a pack of wolves want to come and try to attack you and they run into the spiked walls it's going to damage them if you don't have that turned on what it's going to do is it's going to just kind of keep them from being able to get to you it acts as a wall it won't do any damage to them which makes the spiked walls completely pointless at that point well they're not completely pointless because i think they're cheaper to make than walls but i like to keep it check marked on in case something tries to attack me show floating damage text i have that turned on it kind of works kind of like an rpg thing so like if i'm attacking something with the bow it'll tell me how much damage it's doing allow custom recipes so in this game you can actually create your own food and there is actually a big benefit to that if you want to see videos based on that best person to go see is this guy named flinger foo i honestly don't really know a whole ton about it because i've personally never done it but i watched this video one time and i'm like wow that's actually really useful so i keep that check marked on for just whenever i want to make my own food and i'll probably make a video on it myself through my play uh, playthrough series allow raid dino feeding so this is important for pvp servers they should never have this check marked on i'm sure a lot everyone that's watching this knows that there's a dino called the titanosaur in this game and the titanosaur will literally wreck any base really fast it will literally melt through it what the devs of the game did is to keep people from being able to keep these dinos once you tame a titanosaur it slowly starts to starve which means it slowly starts to die and that's just to keep people from having these dinos available at any time but when you're playing in a single player game it's a different story taming a titanosaur is a pain in the butt and i would hate to spend all this time trying to tame one and not being able to keep it so if you check mark the allow rating dino feeding on it'll allow you 
to be able to feed your dino, to be able to feed your titanosaur and keep them permanently forever without having to worry about ever losing them. But I will say that taming a titanosaur is really completely pointless in this game unless you're doing it just, just to flex. You know what I mean? Which, hey, there ain't nothing wrong with a little flexing, baby. Supply crate loot quality. I have this set to three. By default, you will never get good quality blueprints from loot drops if you have that set to default. Well, I can't say never, but it's much more rare. It's never happened to me. So I have that set to three, so that way I get a good enough saddles. So that way when I have to go fight bosses, I can craft these saddles to give to my dinos to be able to fight the bosses. Fishing loot quality, I have that set to four. Listen, fishing in this game is a little monotonous. You're just kind of sitting around fishing, blah, 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 blah. I want it to be more rewarding. So if I go fishing some for something, I want it to be much more rewarding. It's much easier to go fly around and get collecting loot drops Drops than it is to sit and do nothing but fish just because it's monotonous. So I want it to be more rewarding because if it was up to me and they were actually the same and I couldn't change it, I would never go fishing. So this gives me an incentive to go fishing more in the game. Fuel consumption interval multiplier, the default automatically goes to 1.16, I think. I'm not totally sure on that, so don't quote me on it. Regardless, I'd kind of bring it, I'd say one is even better, because if you're playing by yourself, you don't want to have to constantly have to gather resources to be able to make fuel. So 1.166 is good enough, but I'm actually going to move this to one for me. And then increase platform structure limits. Listen, if you want to build crazy structures, if you want to build an amazing ship out of those rafts, if you want to build a spaceship out of the Quetzal's back, if you want to build a mansion on top of the back of a brontosaurus, you need to have this completely leveled out. Same thing that was with the tether distance. I do the same thing with the structure platform. I literally just hold nine until it goes all the way up and then I leave it at that. Active events. So let's say you want to have the Easter event, but it's not Eastern time and you've missed out on the Easter event. You just put in the Easter event on here and then it'll, when you load into the game, the game will act like as if it's the Easter event. It's all it is. I don't know the exact name for all the events. You can just do a simple Google search and it'll show up all of them on there. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are my single player slider settings. I hope you like it. I hope you use it, honestly, and I hope this helped you out. Hey, and if it helped you out, please make sure you hit that like button. And again, if you want me to make any other tutorials on any kind of sliders, anything a little different, any little tweaks that you want me to make, hey, just let me know in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to do it because I'm always here to help. And I make weekly content on Ark, Valheim, and other services survival game. So hey, if you hit that subscribe button or go check out my other videos, I would really appreciate that. That really helped me. It'll make my heart feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And as always, if you've been here before, if you're going to the gym, have a kick-ass workout. If you're not going to the gym, have a kick-ass day. And I will see you guys next time in the yard.